Today, it's nearly impossible to turn on the news without another Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes. This leaves many asking the question, are we in the end times and will this generation see the return of Jesus Christ? Our guests today are Drs. George and Hazel Hill, and we'll be talking about what the Bible says about the times we're living in. For the church, these are exciting times. Find out more on Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. So glad you've tuned into the broadcast because it's going to be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got guests returning. You've seen them once before. They're here again. Doctors George and Hazel Hill, welcome to the program. Welcome to Thank the program. Thank you for having us. Uh, you're the founders of Victory Churches International, an apostolic church planting organization, and you have birthed a worldwide network of churches, Bible colleges, ministry training centers, world missions, <laughs> orphanages, and then it says, and more. And more. And more. And more. If you're not tired of already, then you will be because it says, and more. And it continues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, though. It's, it's a miracle story. And we have done a previous program uh, with you uh, some time ago on mm. that subject. And we're going to do another one. We're going to do some more because there's probably more to tell <laughs> on the whole. We, we ran out of time is what we were saying. Uh, so today, though, we want to talk about end times because mm. uh, honestly, uh, it, it almost seems like it's either a high interest subject or it's I don't want to talk about it subject. Yeah, you can right. have both yeah. scenarios going. Yeah, Some people yeah. aren't too sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the end times fascinates me, it really does. And it's one of the things that actually brought me to the Lord. Yes. You right. know, when Hazel gave me that little book by Hal Lindsey, yeah. The Late Great Planet Earth, I read that and I thought, man, this is incredible. All the questions that you have and, uh, and the answers were there right. from Scripture. Mm -hmm. And say, that's what I wanted to see. I think prophecy actually proves your Bible is true. Yes, it You know, does. Jesus said in John 14, 29, he says, I've told you these things before, before. they come to pass, so that when they come to pass, you, you might, might believe. believe. And so prophecy is powerful for that, for many reasons, but that's one of them. Proves your Bible is true. And yeah. there's so many things. This, the Bible is so prophetic, it really is. I know. Especially pertaining to Israel. You know, there's three lots of prophecies. There's prophecies for Israel, and there's prophecies for the church, and there's prophecy for the nations and you don't want to get them mixed up otherwise yeah. you you really have a problem you know well, that's got, called the rightly dividing the word of truth right rightly yes. dividing the word of truth. truth yes yeah and, and that's why do. people need to be taught they yes do. right they yeah. need to be taught but i think it's really important today prophecy is being fulfilled before our very eyes it is you know you watch the news and Honestly, you're watching the news, but you remember seeing that in the Scripture. Bible somewhere, yeah. you know? That's yeah. right. And so it's prophecy being fulfilled before your yeah. very eyes, yeah. which is like you say, it proves the Bible is true, proves, proves that Israel is a nation that God has his hand upon. Yes. Amen. Yes. In fact, Israel is a key to the you end know, times. It is. One example is the book of Revelation talks about and the inability to buy and sell unless you have a mark. That's right. And it says 666. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, we could go into that, how it has actually digital uh, application. But, you know, up until the last few years, you really couldn't see that. No. That's right. Yeah. Globally. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can now. Well, That's there's right. a lot of things you couldn't see. I think, before, yeah. but you can now. Look at the two witnesses yeah. going to be seen in the streets of Jerusalem. Right. I know when we were first saved, you couldn't have seen that. Yeah. But now with internet the way it is and yeah. so forth, you yeah. can see that so easily. Live yes, on CNN. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the Bible's full of scripture. And, uh, you know, that talks about the end times. Yeah. I know, uh, Hazel, you wanted to talk a little bit about Matthew 24. Yeah. Let's start there. Okay, Matthew 24, if, if you have your Bible there, you might want to look at it, but it's so awesome because I think some people are afraid. They're afraid right now to know what's going to go on, you know, mm -hmm. but we don't have to be afraid. Right. This is an exciting time to be alive. Yeah, sure. Amen. Yeah. It's a really exciting time. Yeah. But in Matthew 24, 
it speaks about many nations. But let's look at verse 4. It says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things mm. must come to pass. But mm. the end is not yet. So we're not in the, you know, the last day that we're going to live on the face of the earth. But these are signs, right? Yeah. And it goes on in verse 7. It says, For nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and various places. Uh, places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. I just want to stop there and say that as for George and I, we believe that we are in the time of the beginning of mm, sorrows. That's right. Some people say, well, where are we yeah. on the on the scale, the yeah. calendar? And I would say that we are in the day of the beginning of sorrows. We're seeing all these things, pestilence, famines, earthquakes, yeah. uh, you know, in diverse places, wars, a uh, country rising against country and all these different things. Definitely the time of sorrow. There's yeah. a lot of sorrow mm -hmm. in the world. But praise God, none for us is created. Christians, because yeah. we know what's going to happen. And the word nations is actually the word ethnos. Ethnos. Ethnos, yes, yeah. and that is what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Ethnic, Ethnic groups. Yeah. Strife Ethnic and, groups. and uh, division mm -hmm. yeah. uh, more than ever before. <clears throat> Absolutely. And yeah. it's being fed, racial yeah. strife. Yeah. yeah. But then it goes on, it says here, it says, and then they will deliver you up for tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated for by all nations for my sake. And then shall many be offended. And I think this scripture applies to us today. <laughs> there we many are. will be offended. Many will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will arise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. What an atmosphere. What a climate. You talk about spiritual climates. Yeah. Yeah. What a spiritual climate that is when you read that and you see, oh, Oh, there's going to be offenses. Uh, Christians are going to be offended with one another. That's a novel idea, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> and then it goes on and says, and we'll betray one another and we'll hate one another. We're seeing that betrayal and that hatred even today in the church. And that's very sad. And it says, then false prophets will arise. That's the kind of culture or climate where false prophets are happy. It's a They're downward happy progression. when there's hatred, It's right? a downward progression there. And it begins with offense. Yeah. yeah. You know, Don't, do, we're not to be offended. Yeah. It's so easy to get offended oh. at something that somebody has done mm -hmm. or something that somebody hasn't done. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Woe unto you if you if you get offended. Yeah. You know, and if you get offended and you don't deal with it, you will become an offense. Well, and if you become an offense to others, it says, Woe unto you. Wow. Yeah. See, yeah. I think we need to do more teaching on the in the church so that the Christians are more aware of this. Because even when someone uh, betrays you, right, or rises up in a betrayer, like David's son Absalom. When that rises up, why is it that some Christians still follow that betrayer? Why is it? It shouldn't be. No. We need to understand what's going on, and we need to reject that kind of behavior. Amen? I find and that I get a response in that regard because I used to do a lot more preaching on end times than I do now. And I find if I do, uh, you get a little bit of pushback. Well, oh, you yeah. know, that doesn't really interest me. Uh, there, it's partly the culture, right? And, uh, and, and there's not that intense interest. I know when uh, we got saved and when you were saved, there was an intense interest in that oh, generation. Very much was, so. yeah, we absolutely. could see something was shifting globally, but we weren't as advanced as we are now. Now it's almost like, I hear no evil, see no evil. You know, I don't want to know. Mm. You know, not, mm. ignorance is bliss kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that's kind of sad because just what you said, they're falling for the trap of offense, which is rampant in our culture. Mm. In fact, everybody's offended over everything all the time now. And social media, there was a a leader in our city here, this is quite a few years ago, who was a mayor for one term, and he couldn't, he said, I won't go another term. And when asked, I asked him even on, privately, why? He said, social media has made it impossible wow. to lead effectively. And I think that's what we're seeing is social media is feeding this spirit. Feeding it, yeah, yeah. But wow. the truth will set yeah. us free. Yeah. So we need the truth, whether we like it or not, we need it. 
Right. And I'll just finish this off here. And it says, and because lawlessness will abound. And certainly we're seeing that yeah. against hatred against the police and everything else. Oh, it's a lawless thing that's happening. And the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end, and that's us, amen, <laughs> shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Yeah. That will bring the end, the end of the age. Yeah. And think, even the gospel being preached to the ends of the world, like even a generation ago, that was like, how's that going to happen? How's that going to happen? But because of the internet, yeah. that could happen instantly. Easily, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Amazing. A prophet saw this in the 70s, and he was ridiculed for it. He saw uh, Chinese people in their fields, rice fields, watching many TVs in their hands. Now, this wow. is the mid-70s. Mm. Yeah. And he, he said, <laughs> and he at the same time prophesied a billion soul harvest. Yeah. This prophet said, <clears throat> he saw all these things, and people said, what are you talking about? That Dick Tracy, you know, are you talking on the phone, <laughs> yeah. on your watch? And he said, I'm not, I'm just telling you what the Lord showed me. Yeah. That's not even, you don't have to conceive yeah. it now. It's absolutely reality. reality. Yeah. Everyone has every kind of device right here in your hand, which includes television. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is probably one of the key ways of reaching. It's as going a, to. As much as this has been a yep. horrible detriment oh, yeah, to yeah. our culture. Well, you know, I have uh, schools in Pakistan uh, for orphan children and orphan homes I have in Pakistan. And just recently, we've been able to distribute to the parents or the uh, relatives or the kids themselves, little device. And on that little device, they can actually hear the Bible in their own language wow. told in story form. Isn't that amazing? So that is going <clears throat> through the whole. I'm talking about children that are in the kilns. They're making bricks with their bare right. hands. They yeah. can play from five years of age and up. And yeah. I've made a school for them because they were illiterate. So I've started that school. And from that school, they're learning how to read and write and learning about Jesus. But lately, we've got these little devices. And yeah. I'm so excited because it's going out to parents and different people around. And they're all sitting down after they eat their little meager dinner. They're sitting down <laughs> and listening to the Bible in their own language. Isn't that wonderful? Not video, oh, yeah. but right, uh, audio. But there you right. go. That's prophecy being fulfilled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So the, wow. the gospel is being preached in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Isn't that mm -hmm. how uh, inspiring the way Matthew, that 24 says, and this gospel shall be preached to the ends of the <laughs> it world. It shall. <laughs> it's like, it's not maybe if this, yeah. it was not even a, it's like a, almost a command. It shall be. Yeah. And then the end then, shall come. Then the end shall come. Oh, yeah. But yeah. see how close we are then. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, well, uh, I think there's a hunger in the hearts of people, a hunger for the presence of God, a hunger uh, for direction, and which way are we supposed God, to yeah. go, and a hunger for the power of God, yeah. the hunger to see the miracle working power of God. Well, that's and true. that has to happen, doesn't yeah. it, John? And even in the last little while, we've had people come to us and say, uh, you know, I've prayed, I've, uh, I've been believing, and, uh, and yet I'm not seeing the power of God. I'm right. not seeing the miracles. I'm not seeing what we're looking for. And, and they're desperate. But, you know, I believe that God, when he comes, it's going to be a suddenly. But yeah. it's going to be when the word is fulfilled yeah. and it comes to pass. In the last couple of years... Uh, you know, with the, the COVID and the lockdown and the masking mm -hmm. and the everything, you know, a lot of people have just been filled with fear. And uh, yeah. you talk about offense. Mm -hmm. A lot of their pastors that we know say that this has been the, the, the biggest thing that they've ever had to deal with as mm -hmm. far as division in the church. It's, it's been a real distraction. But on the other hand, it is a sign of yeah. the end times. It is. Yeah. It is a sign of the end times. I'm I had a pastor from uh, Ontario say to me, 35 years pastored his church. Uh, you know, it's a spirit-filled church. He said, the most divisive thing that has ever hit my church in 35 years was the masking issue. Wow. And, you know, 
the yeah, related and what issues. From there? He said the biggest issue, and I thought masking it becomes the biggest <laughs> issue. <laughs> you know, That's I mean, funny. seriously, it can't be that pe petty, but it is. Yeah. But it's the spirit behind it. It's the spirit. The spirit yeah. behind it that's feeding it. But you know, I want to just say this: what, and I've said it on the program many mm -hmm. times. We can't go into that spirit. No. We, we have to rise above it. We cannot we because we can see the bigger picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I had a word come to me in earlier this year, in a prophetic conference, and I heard the Lord say, I'm sending out messengers, which I, is the word angelos, mm -hmm. my messengers, my angelos to mm -hmm. the north, south, east, and west. And he, he said, and they're gathering in my people. I will fill my house like I filled the granaries of Egypt in seven years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't hear about the other seven years, mm -hmm. but I heard that word. I believe that starts in uh, the fall season here uh, it, that we're in. I believe that's the beginning of that seven years. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, the church isn't really even focused that way. Mm. I believe we need to. We need to. That's what end times tells us, right? Yeah. But, you know, look, you know, the scripture says two things are going to happen in the end times. It says in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit in all flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Yeah. Young men are going to have visions. Yeah. Yeah. All men will have dreams. And on my handmaidens, I'll pour out my spirit, saith yeah. the Lord. So there's going to be a revival there on one end. Praise but then God. it also says the same period of time in the last days, many are going to depart from the yeah, faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Right. Doctrines seducing the they Seduce them and take them yeah. away and get yeah. them yeah, in, involved right. in something else. Seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. Yeah. Wow. And so devils have doctrines. Yeah. Is, this is why you have to really understand the Word of God so you're not deceived. The passage yeah. you read in Matthew 24, it says, many shall be deceived. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what's right. the solution to deception? Well, what's the answer? Yeah. I mean, it's knowledge, isn't it? Yes, it is. Correct knowledge. If you've got the right knowledge, you're not going to be deceived. You'll see the trap before you ever enter into it. I think and that. I think there's a lot of people just don't read the Bible. They don't know what the Bible has to say about different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then That's they come up with their own opinion. That's really strong. On the, on the Word of God, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, victory yeah. was built on the yeah. Word. Yeah. Yeah. You've got you to know, know so the Word. So it's strong. Yeah. But I think offense, get back to that offense. Yeah. I think that we have to be very careful not to allow ourselves mm. to be caught in the trap of offense. Yes, you that's know right. that George and I experienced a very big betrayal not so long ago. But you know, in that betrayal, <laughs> we prayed and we heard from the Lord, I will deal with this. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I will deal with this. I have to say that grace came on me personally. Yeah, grace right. came on me yep. and it was like it never happened. Yeah. Wow. It mm. was just the grace of God. Mm. And I'm telling you, it made me, because what will we being faith preachers, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but then I saw grace in a different light, and I thought we need grace, unmerited favor. We do. All of God will ever need for anything we'll ever yeah. face. And yeah. when that grace came on me, it was like I got up off my knees, a new person. Yeah. You know, right. and so I didn't get caught up in that because it could have knocked me yeah. out of the race. So right? grace to keep you in the right posture. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know, and that as you're grace talking is unmerited. On that very thing, I just sense there's some of our mm. viewers that are watching this that bitterness and hurt, wow. offense have really gripped you. Maybe you're housebound and you're feeling abandoned and isolated, wow. and that's what's gripped your heart. Mm -hmm. And I hope you just heard what was said. Hazel said, I gave it to God, and the Lord gave her a release, gave her a grace to forgive. I'm going to ask you to do that. Right now, you, say, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't forgive because they wait for the emotion of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay. not an emotion. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and you can do that anytime mm -hmm. you wish. You just choose to. So I'm going to ask you, just do it, because I yeah. believe you're sick right now. Your body is racked with pain mm -hmm. because you haven't given away that offense, and you've held that yeah. bitterness close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Just release it right now. It'll be a deliverance. Yeah, Thank you, Lord. You'll feel God's presence you, fresh and new. You won't feel that darkness and that solitude. You'll feel Him close to you. Wow. Just do that right now. Amen. Um, and what you would know, you say are some of the most profound signs right now that people could look yeah. at in our world and say, well, that's a sign of the end times? I think Israel is, is the big one. And of course, that happened 1948 mm -hmm. and then 1967. Seven. You know, and that's the beginning you know, of a lot of things. And that's you, when you go to Israel, like we just came back from there, 
and that was just desert and swampland 70 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Now is the second biggest and nobody producer, and nobody wanted it. Oh. It's you like know? an oasis today. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was a kid in England, I mean, they were raising money to plant trees. Yeah. In, in Israel. Israel, same yeah. in Australia and Canada yeah. as well. You know, because the trees were being planted to suck up the water. Because mm -hmm. it was swamp Because it was swamp land, you know? But look, and then Turks had cut down the trees and all the topsoil yeah. had blown away. Yeah. So it was an absolute mess. Now you go over there and it's incredible. Yeah. There's all kinds of fruit and vegetation, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And of course, everything is being be built beautifully. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. That in itself is a total miracle. It's a Benjamin, sign. Benjamin Disraeli, you know, he was the Queen Victoria's uh, Jewish Prime Minister. Right. First one. And uh, Queen Victoria asked him, she says, Benjamin, can you give me one word that proves my Bible, or one verse of scripture that proves my Bible is true? Wow. And, she, and he says, I'll give you one word, Jew. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah. I'll right. give you one word. Just the fact there is a Jewish people yeah. uh, in the land of in Israel. That is a miracle. I know. Yeah. I mean, look how many times they've tried to kill them and destroy yeah. them, yeah. but they're God's people. He says, if you could destroy the Jews, you could throw your Bible away. Yeah, yeah it's true. Because it's based on the fact that there's going to be a Jewish people yeah. at the end of the day. With days. their own language and With their own culture. Yeah, in their own land. Over yeah. 2,000 years, yes. you know. Yeah. spread all over the earth. That's right. They come back, their own language, their own culture, and amazing what God's done. When we come yes. back, we'll talk about something Romans 11 says about the Jew and the Gentile and oh, what yeah. that is going to yes. release. Yes. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by becoming a monthly partner with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan. All donors will receive this Lifeline Today fridge magnet, a reminder that you stand with Dick and Joan for Canada. Pledge your support for $25 a month and receive the booklet, Your Lifeline Today, Scriptures for Your Every Need. In it, you'll find prayer strategies, scriptures, and testimonies to build your faith for healing, family salvation, finances, and more. Partner at $50 a month and receive as a thank you this elegant display showcasing a replica of the widow's might as spoken of by Jesus in Mark 12. This powerful reminder of sacrificial giving will inspire you daily. Lifeline Today would also like to send you this finely crafted communion set when you partner at $100 a month. This silver plated serving tray with goblets is decorated with a panorama etching of the holy city of Jerusalem and is a beautiful display for any home. Your tax-deductible donation will empower this ministry to release the prophetic word of God across our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Malachi chapter 4 speaks of God's coming judgment. But in verses 2 and 3, it says this, For you who fear my name... The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and you will go free, leaping with joy like calves let out to the pasture. On that day, God says, when I act, you will tread upon the wicked as if they were dust under your feet. Yes, gross darkness covers the land. We see it even now. But you, God's people, will be healed. You will go free. You will leap with joy. You will tread the enemy under your feet. You have much to look forward to, saints. So be encouraged today. If you need prayer, give us a call. We want to pray for you, whatever your need. 403-942-0123. We're talking with Dr. George and Hazel Hill, and it's about end times, and I'm telling you what, we're really condensing what we're doing here. Uh, we said that in a previous program with them, too, but the reality is that we actually should do a series on end time prophecy to really mine out some of these scriptures, because if you know some of the scriptures that are definitive about what we're in and, and seeing in these times, mm -hmm. it, it's almost, I would say, shocking. Yeah. Uh, that and, and maybe that's why some people don't want to go there. It it shocks you about yeah. how close we are to the end of the age and to the fulfillment of Scripture. Mm -hmm. It is really profound. But if you love the truth and you want the truth, you know, then you're going to want to know this. You aren't would you? think so. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, why live life without knowing the truth? People say we want truth. Well, okay, yeah. this is where you find it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes, but you were mentioning right. the book of Romans. 
yeah, the Romans end 11. of the age, the end of the Gentile period. <clears throat> Did yeah. you want to expound on that, Dick? Yeah, That's because so one, well, I think it's the 15th verse that says, when the Jews are reconnected to Messiah, yeah. their yeah. Messiah, he says, if they're breaking away was life to the Gentiles, what will their return be? He yeah. says, but life from the dead. It's telling us twice in that chapter, I think verse 11 and 15, yeah. saying that when the Jews are grafted back in, uh, that it will release such great glory. Uh, Paul even says indescribable. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, even how, how is the gospel going to be preached, you know, in the book of Revelation when the church disappears? Yeah. Right. Like the church is taken away, Revelation 4 and verse 1, come up hither. Yeah. Next time you see the church, yeah. they're singing a new song in heaven. Yeah. And that's when everything <laughs> begins. Sounds right. good God. to me. <laughs> all of the seals are broken, etc., and uh, and all kinds of things begin to happen on the face of the yeah. earth. Wow. But there's four ways the gospel is going to go around the world. You know, you've got the two witnesses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and in, uh, in uh, Revelation 11, you've got uh, the angels. It says how angels will actually preach the word of God yeah. in Revelation 14. Right. They've never done that until now. Wow. But angels are going to preach the word. And then you've got uh, all of the 144,000 right. Jews that are going to be sealed by God. And they're going to be evangelists, right. you know, and... Uh, and then there's the, a fourth way, which is, uh, what's the fourth way? I was just tribulation thinking. saints. Yeah, the tribulation, the tribulation saints. saints. Right. All of those they're that had loved one. ones. Yeah. yeah. All that had loved ones that have, where they were in the rapture. Yeah. And now they've been told about Christ and they yeah. make that decision afterwards. Yeah. And that's the group you don't want to be in. No, yeah, if because, you have a, oh, if you yeah. come from a family that knows the Lord mm -hmm. and you're left behind, that's yeah. exactly it's a reality. Right. Oh yeah. And now you don't is the want day of salvation. There. Now is um, the time just, of salvation. We have two minutes. Okay. <laughs> and I want to invite you to make sure you know Jesus Christ. Yes, uh, you know what? There is hope in this world and the only hope is Jesus mm -hmm. and we are so close to the end I don't think that even needs a lot of convincing but no. you can hear in this program we could actually do two or three hours of this <laughs> because there are so many so scriptures easy. that will point definitively to yeah. the times that we're living in and the scripture says this we're not to be fearful in fact our response is look up for your redemption draws near yeah. if you don't know Jesus Christ or maybe you just haven't been serious yeah. I'm going to invite you to do that today I'm going to ask you, I would even beg of you, yeah. invite Jesus Christ, Absolutely. not just Savior, but Lord. Lord. Let him be yeah. your Lord. Amen. You can do that. I mean, call our prayer lines. They'll lead you right. Somebody will Beautiful. pray with you, and then they'll pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit because you don't want to live in this age without Holy Spirit, do you? And, no, and you, the, don't. you know, we can do our part too. You know, we can be a witness. I don't want any angels doing my job, right? <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm a witness for Jesus. Amen? Be gone, Amen. Man. No, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right now I'm talking yeah. about And yeah. so we do that. But... There's so much that we could say about that, but we have a new book coming out, and it's a new book on um, on spiritual warfare. Yeah, right. spiritual warfare. And I'm thinking, as we're talking about salvation oh for people, goodness, yeah. then the Christians around yeah. those people that are unsaved can do spiritual warfare on their behalf. <laughs> right. Right? right. And this book is so incredible. I'm telling you, I'm so excited about it that we want to tell the okay. people how the they can get it. The information's on your screen, and you can also call. They'll give you the information yes. about that book. It's a brand new book, yeah. but I would agree. You need a book on spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. You oh, need yeah. a book yeah. on spiritual warfare. Thanks Thank for being you so part of the program. Remember this, <laughs> Canada will be Amen. saved. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and on our YouTube channel, Dick and Joan TV.